Hello, AIDS. Hello? Stan? Kyle? You remember when we were little? Us friends said we'd always be there for each other when things got bad. What do you mean? What's happened? Us friends said we'd always be there for each other when things got bad. What do you mean? What's happening? This hour, the deadly incident at the Christmas parade in Waukesha, Wisconsin. A car plowed through the parade this afternoon for unknown reasons. More than 23 people were hit, at least half of them children, and some have died. Police are not releasing exact numbers because they're still trying to notify next of kin. Witnesses are smashed through a band and two dance groups, one made up of children. The other, a group called the Milwaukee Dancing Grannies. On the morning of December the 26th, 2004, Amanda Rabau was in bed with her boyfriend in a beachside bungalow in the resort of Kaolack. It sounded like a jumbo jet, like, a, you know, when you go to get on a plane and you, you walk up those stairs and it's, the, the engines are spinning round and it's really, really loud. Her boyfriend, Daryl, jumped up to open the curtains. He had a look of horror on his face and he just screams at me, get out of the room now. This was the wave that was about to hit them. Amanda and Daryl jumped from the room just as the building disintegrated. Daryl managed to climb onto a roof. Amanda was sucked under. I got crushed backwards against this wall and then everything else just started crushing back and rising up above my head. So as well as pushing me backwards, it then started to push me under. And then I remember, um, I just remember taking, uh, taking my last breath before I went under. And then I remember, I just remember thinking, I hope it's quick. And then something pulled on my hand. And this man, he pulled me out between this really small gap. The second wave swept Amanda back into the water and she fought for her life for three hours. When the water finally receded, she was surrounded by bodies, including the man who'd saved her. I have a lot of questions in my head in life whether you do the right thing by someone. Someone should, he should have survived because he saved my life without a doubt, but he didn't survive. Amanda was reunited with Daryl and they spent the night with other survivors on the hillside. It was sort of like the first time I'd sort of looked at myself and I had, I had just wood hanging out of my body, like not like a splinter, like massive pieces of wood. 
I was with the rescue teams as they discovered the horror that had unfolded in Kaolak two days later. Local people say more than 2,000 people could have lost their lives there, although that figure is impossible to verify. The Thai authorities are struggling to cope with the sheer number of bodies. All through the night we could hear helicopters and sirens and cars and we thought this is good, you know, in the morning we'll, we'll be rescued, people will come and, and get us. But that wasn't the case at all. When the roads were finally cleared, they managed to get on a bus to Bangkok. I was sick for 14 and a half hours solidly. Brown water and I don't know what was coming out of my body. I actually thought I was going to die. Still too ill to walk, Amanda finally made it back to the UK. There was a girl who I can't find, her name was Matilda, and she was from Argentina, and we were in the sea together. And when it went under, she said, take my hand, and I said, no, I can't, because I knew you can't hold on to someone, you've got to be strong and be on your own, and I didn't take her hand. Despite her injuries, Amanda couldn't shake off the need to go back to Cow Lack. Within six weeks, she'd returned to Thailand, with £50,000 she'd raised just by telling her story to help with disaster relief. I wanted to go back to Kaolak and I wanted to go back and thank the people and I wanted to go back to see if I could find the family of the man who I still think saved my life. Ten years on and it's as if Amanda is back in the wave when she talks about the moment she almost lost her life. I survived that day for, for one reason or another, and I was meant to survive, to have my children. And as far as I think of life as of that day, that day my new life began. Um, and I see life as of from 2004, not before. There gotta be a few sparks of sweet humanity left in this burned out burg. We just have to figure out a way to mobilize it. He's right. We need something that everyone in this town can get behind. We need... a symbol. Something that appeals to the best in each and every one of us. Something good. Something decent. Something pure. Whether she's naked under that toga, she's French. You know that. Got it. Ready with the speakers, Ray. Slime blower is ready. Okay. Internal audio set. Internal electric set. Slime blower, prime and set. Oh, good slime, good slime. Winston, is our slime in a good mood tonight? I hope so. She's a lot bigger than a toaster. All yours, Mike. Let's go. Thank you. Testing, one, two, testing. Hey, how many of you people here tonight are a national monument? Would you raise your hand, please? Hey. Oh, hello, miss. That's frosted. It's slime time. Beautiful. Pilot controls are ready. All right, it's getting late. It's almost midnight. Let's go, Venkman. Here's something off the request line from Liberty Island. We got to squeeze some New Year's juice from you, Big Apple. You know your love.
positive energy flowing, huh, Big D? Keep kicking, Libby. You make this work, we'll pop for a weekend in Vegas with a Jolly Green Giant. Nike's in her size, Ray. Oh, don't worry, she's tough. She's a Harvard chick! Lockdown for the unvaccinated, the country has now further tightened its measures. Starting this Monday, there will be a lockdown in Austria for everyone, the unvaccinated as well as the vaccinated, meaning that stores, uh, restaurants, bars, theaters, everything will be closed to the public, except for essential uh, stores such as supermarkets, pharmacies, as well as schools, which will remain to be open, although the government urges parents to keep their children at home in order to keep them safe. The Austria has also announced a mandatory vaccination for everyone starting 1st of February. This is needed, according to the government, because Austria has a quite low vaccination rate of about 65 percent, lower than other Western European countries, and infection numbers have continued to rise. The Austria has right now a seven-day incidence rate of about 1,000 infections per 100,000 people. And I'm not far from a district, an area in rural Austria where the incidence rate is the highest. And also in these areas, uh, there are ICU units lacking, the hospitals are close to collapse. And this is why the Aust Austrian government has taken these measures, because they're saying now only a lockdown can help us.